2018, Menelik Dyer here, and ever since Elon Musk started talking about first principles thinking, I wanted to know more. It's hard not to want to dive into the secrets of someone so successful. But before we jump into Elon, let's tackle someone a little more ordinary. This guy. James Harvey had won the lotto. It was 2005 and he would continue to win the lotto for the next six years. He would use first principles thinking to ensure he won lotto every time he played. From a mathematical point of view, he was basically printing money. To understand how he did this, we need to get our heads around first principle thinking. First principles thinking is taking things back to the start, to the basics of how it actually works. Think of reality as a box. This is the actual scientific way the world works. If you lived inside this box, everything would be 100% true. Unfortunately, you don't live in this box. You live in this one. Let's call this one a proxy, your version of reality. And there are different types of proxies people have. Proxies where people have self-limiting beliefs. Proxies that are massively unrealistic. Proxies where people just don't live on Earth. And of course there are accurate ones. But the important thing here is that this proxy represents your best guess at reality. We can use analogies to understand why proxies can differ so much from reality. Elon Musk refers to first principles thinking as the opposite of thinking by analogy. But don't try and teach this to old people, because as we know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. In fact, in 2006, a study by the Harvest Business Review showed that old people really struggled in the workplace at adopting new technology. Except, they don't. A study published that same year showed the complete opposite. Their experiences meant that they were better able to adapt and change. And there's the problem. Either story is convincing on its own, but put together they contradict each other. Business people love analogies. My favorite is the first mover advantage, where businesses get into the market first and dominate form of monopoly and they can't lose. Except research shows that you are more likely to fail as a first mover. This is confusing because the early bird catches the worm. Because if you're not first, you're last. But the first mouse gets killed because you got to learn from others' mistakes. Here's another one. When you start a business, you have to start in a niche. Google didn't start in a niche. It sounds ridiculous to think they should have started as the search engine of choice for people who love eating pizza in Kazakhstan. The real reason Google succeeded was they provide 10x value. Okay, I know I'm cherry picking ideas here, but the point is that in almost any analogy, you can cherry pick examples that either prove or disprove what you're trying to say. And that's the problem with analogies. Analogies tie up facts in a neat little package, obscuring the truth. If you're having a hard time accepting this, or your mind's coming up with counter arguments, consider this. Psychologists have been studying analogies for years. They call them heuristics. Heuristics are mental shortcuts. Stereotypes, analogies, rule of thumbs, metaphors, educated guesses, common sense fall under the umbrella term heuristics. Elon Musk refers to the brain as a sort of supercomputer, and it is essentially the most efficient supercomputer we have. In 2009, IBM's blue jean supercomputer called Dawn went head-to-head -head trying to simulate 
1% of the human brain. It took 10 minutes for Dawn to simulate what a fraction of our minds would do in a single second. It's not just the processing power of the mind that makes our computer fast, it's the software. And our software has some interesting tricks. One of the glitches in our software is the quicker you understand something, the more real it appears. The faster your brain can process something, the more true it feels. Analogies like heuristics cheat the system. They make things easier to understand and thus often feel more true. So do the walls of your proxy represent reality or a clever analogy? What about your walls around Lotto? Here's a few. The odds are stacked in favour of the Lotto Commission, not the players. No one ever wins. Lotto is a tax on the poor or stupid. There's no way to win from Lotto. I love the Lotto analogy. It's a clever example of how James Harvey questioned everything. And when he realised his proxy didn't represent reality, he did what any rational person would. That day, James walked into the Lotto head office and asked them if what he had found was right, whether what he was about to do was legal. Because reality isn't just your proxy, it's how your proxy fits in with everyone else's. Getting closer to reality sometimes means getting further away from everyone else's. When Elon Musk calculated the cost of getting into space, his calculation that the price could be massively reduced wasn't just taking him closer to reality. It took him further away from what everyone who has ever built a rocket was saying. When your proxy doesn't match the world's, it's really hard to keep believing that you're right. When James Harvey realized this, he turned to his first principles thinking toolbox and started testing things. The toolbox is made of science, logic, maths, and physics. Now I want to explain what James did without using maths. Because if we think about it this way, it is possible to guarantee you win lotto. You just have to buy all the tickets. Unfortunately, lotto looks like this. It will always cost you more to buy all the tickets than you could possibly win back. So James went hunting where the opposite was true. And he found the Massachusetts cash windfall. Once every three months or so, a jackpot would happen and a guaranteed winner needed to come. So the maths worked out and James went to his friends and explained that in order to buy all the numbers, he needed $100,000. Smartly, his friends said no. <laughs> and this is where the second graph comes in. To prove he was right, he didn't have to go for the big prize. He could win simply by purchasing every three or four number combinations and still win. Now rather than risking all his money at once, he could try and win one of the smaller prizes. So with his money, he pulled together $1,000 worth of tickets. Now I don't know about you, but investing $1,000 in Lotto on some maths that everyone would think is wrong is a really scary idea. In a later video, I want to go in depth into some tools for uncovering reality. It's really hard to wrap your head around this point. Analogies are really good at convincing yourself you have the answer. 
but it doesn't always mean you're right. Unless you dive into first principles first, you might as well be shooting in the dark. And I guess this is the point. How accurate is your reality?